My dear brothers and sisters, this is the 17th segment of our 52-week project. And we are going to listen to the same gospel of last week. And but this time, it is in the last, one of the last chapters of the gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. Let's listen more. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us, and you go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went up to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Alam nyo, itong parable ito of the wise and foolish virgins, this is the first of three parables about what they call end times. Sa huling araw po, pag tayo nakatagpo ng Panginoon, may tatlong dalaw. Anong tanong niya? Hindi po secret. Dahil alam natin ang tanong, ang tawag sa atin ngayon sa buhay natin dito, may time homework. Kasi, take home exam. Ano ito ang unang tanong niya kaya? So, para one of the ten virgins po, no? ang sinasabi po dito ay uh, lahat po nang nag-aasama, sinusundo nila yung babae. At kapag sinundo nila, hindi nila alam kung maantala sila. Nagkataon talaga na kan, naantala siya. So, there would be a watchman even in the deep night. Pag meron siya nakita ng parang sulo, ilang sulo, papanapit, isa, dalawa, sabi niya, ah, ito na siguro inaantay na mag-asawa kasi dadali ng asawang lalaki ang babae sa kanyang bahay. You take Mary to your home, di ba? Sabi ng angel kay Joseph. Eh, nagkataon, hindi, yung five foolish virgins, hindi nagdala ng more oil. Kung ano lang ang tama. Samantala, ang wise virgins, ano? Ano ang diferensya? Pwede di more oil. Ano ang diferensya ng wise virgins sa foolish? More oil na-anticipate po nila na pwede magdala. Hindi pa po nangyayari, nakita na nila na pwede magyari. Yun po ay sa yung sign of wisdom. Pero bakit ko po pinili ang virginity? Kasi alam niyo po, ano ba ang ating hinihintay? Di parang end times na po, di ba yung ating bridegroom na tiyatawid ng si Yeso Cristo na second coming? E ano po inaantay natin sa ating second coming? Kundi, tatalim na tayo kung tayo handa pumunta sa langit. At may lapit na ba? Tinatanong natin, bilang mo yung tanong mo, may lapit pa. E lahat na ginatubag natin, lahat po nang ginagawa natin, para sa mga lupa. We did business, we became successful, magkaroon tayo ng mga pamilya, o ano-ano, di ba? Takalimutan pa natin, ay may lapit pa na. That's foolish if you cannot anticipate it. Mary anticipated that. That is the wisdom. And, pero may mga tao ngayon, anticipated nila kahit sa lupang ito, na may langit na. Na ang kanilang kapartner, ang kanilang groom, may pride room nila, ang groom nila, ang Panginoon. E kung naman sa end time, hindi naman tayo mag-aasawa, sabi ni Jesus. Alam nyo, yung inyong iyong asawa, hindi nyo sa asawa sa langit. 
hindi naman kayo kailangan magtalak pa sa langit, di ba? Pangalawa, kayo para magkapatid. So may mga virgins po sa lupang ito. Women who will maintain a life of complete virginity. Not because ayaw nito pag-asawa, but because they want to serve their own. They want to dedicate their whole life to God. May mga babae po, yan ang kanilang pananaw. Alam nyo, meron tayong tatanungin. May sila po itong kilat po kasi maraming maraming mga babae na yun. Hindi po yan sa kanila either mag-asawa sila o ano, maging sabihin nila MD, matandang dalaga, tapos galing pa sila. Hindi. It's a choice to become a forever unmarried. In fact, St. Paul encourages people sa akin. Bakit? Because the end is near. He anticipates that what life naman is to be with God, why not live with God completely already in this life? Doon yung maunawaan. Pag tinanong natin po, itong taong ito na hindi na nag-asawa and chose to live a single life. My name is Bob Lopez. I'm a single woman, almost 50. I teach media and ministry in different institutions. I'd like to share with you my story of finding the one my heart longs for and lives for. I grew up learning and living the faith through my mom in Catholic schooling. I would attend Sunday Masses and sometimes join my mom in her daily Masses. I knew God then as someone up there who might not be happy if I didn't pray and if I sinned. My faith life changed in college. I became a member of a youth group whose motto is Kay Cristo Buong Buhay Habang Buhay. I dedicated my life to the Lord because then I felt that if I wanted peace and joy in my life, it can only be with Jesus. I started to have a personal relationship with Him. My prayers became more personal and my thoughts, actions became more personal, meaning they all should reflect my relationship with Him. I started to learn how to live for Him. I started to follow the one who loved me totally and unconditionally. It hasn't been an easy journey, but in the difficulties I encountered, I would emerge still saying, There is no life apart from Him. A year after graduation, I decided to serve as a youth worker in the same movement I joined in college. I wanted to share what I have with young people so they too will experience being loved by the one who loves them and accepts them totally. My faith in God deepened even more as He trained me to trust in Him and depend on Him in the ministry. I served there for nine years. In 2001, my mom was called home. My world was shattered and my faith shaken. A month after, my dad suffered a heart attack. I was numb and I was begging the Lord to stop. A year after, my dad followed my mom. I was an orphan. No one to be accountable to and to be accountable for. It was hard as a single person at the time. All my siblings had spouses, and I didn't have anyone by my side except God. It was hard to pray, but I believed the prayers of friends and family carried me through. I was alone in my grief, but God's presence was stronger than my grief. I prayed in silence, sitting before God, with my anguished heart and no words. At that time, I would have very bad asthma attacks and I would get hospitalized. I was so sure then that I could die from asthma soon enough. I thought that if I should die, I should die doing what I want to do. So what do I want to do? What am I good at? What do I love doing? I was led to two things talking and traveling, and that meant, for me, training and teaching. 
Later on, it became clearer that it would be for ministry and mission still. My personal mission was then forged, to influence people to love and serve God through teaching and training. I was able to do this in the media evangelization work that I took on after my parents died. I was able to train and influence people to love and serve God through media tools. I was happy. Then in 2012, my doctors and I decided that a total thyroidectomy was needed so I would be able to breathe and swallow without difficulty. Two days after surgery, I lost my voice. A week after, I was told I had unilateral vocal cord paralysis. My left vocal cord wasn't moving. I could not produce sound. I was told to give up teaching and training. Again, my world was shattered. What would I do now? What happens next? Me not teach? Me not sing? How can that be? Since I lived alone, the next few weeks and months were like a personal retreat for me. Only God could know my thoughts and feelings. Then I started to write because I was bursting with emotions and thoughts, and because I was in social media, I started to post my reflections and decided to include photos. I lost my voice, but I did not lose my faith and my desire to share about my faith. That gave birth to another ministry, photography and prayer. Then I asked for prayers from all the saints living and dead that I will have my voice back. Weeks turned into months and my voice gradually became more audible. A year after, I was back in front of people, teaching and training. What mercy and what love God showered on me. In grateful response to that mercy, I would grab every opportunity to teach wherever and whenever. He gave me back my voice. I will use it for him. My throat would still go sore up to now, and sometimes I get afraid that I won't be able to teach again. But I would feel God assuring me that if I lose my voice, there will be another thing that I can do for Him. Hearing that, I would be at peace because my joy was to serve Him. During this COVID pandemic, my in-person sessions were canceled. What can I do? After Easter, I was inspired to use my voice in another way and started my podcast, Gentle Streams, to share prayers, reflections, and book excerpts. My voice is not my own. It was given to me. I have to use it for Him. In all these experiences, I learned to listen to God. When things did not go my way, I would stop and wait for His instructions. I learned to find Him in the experiences I have, in the things that I see, and in people I encounter. As a single woman, I have learned I am not truly alone because God is with me and He has sent people to accompany me in the journey. I have learned to believe that God is always with me, loving me and caring for me and my concerns. I can talk to Him anytime, even without uttering a word. He will guide me in every step. I do not know whether I will marry or not, but that doesn't matter. I am God's beloved handmaid. I will let His will be done in my life. There is this song in my community that is a powerful but scary prayer, and I would like to share it with you. This is a song of Mary. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be done to me according to thy word. Not my will, but your will be done. Teach me your ways and lead me in your truth. Have your way with me, O Lord. Work out your will in my life. For me according to your ways, O Lord, at any cost to me. So like Mary, I say, Be done to me according to thy word. Not my will, but your will be done.